You are welcome to today's video lesson with Bright Edo. In today's lesson, I'll be answering 40 chemistry revision questions that cut across different topics in chemistry. And this video lesson is specifically for those writing the JAMP examination and other chemistry related exams. Now, let's get into the first practice question, which says, which compound below is an alcohol? Now, to solve this question is very easy. First of all, we have to understand what an alcohol is as an organic compound, because alcohols are a group of organic compounds. And for we to easily identify a compound that is an alcohol, it will have the OH functional group, okay? And this is simply called the hydroxyl functional group, okay? This must be noted. It will have the OH functional group, which is called the hydroxyl functional group. That means the compound we have the OH in it. So with the look of things, is option A the correct answer? No. This is called tetrachloromethane. This is not an alcohol. Is option B the correct answer? No. This is a carboxylic acid. And carboxylic acids are also called alkanoic acids. And to be specific, this compound here is called ethanoic acid. Okay, it's called ethanoic acid. And ethanoic acid is not an alcohol. So going to op option C, option C can be the answer because option C basically is called uh, a trichloromethane. Okay, whereby for option D, this, this can be the answer because this compound is an hydrocarbon. What's an hydrocarbon? A compound that contains just hydrogen and carbon. And to be specific, this compound is an alkane, okay, called ethane. Now, moving over to option E. Looking at option E, does it have the OH functional group called the hydroxyl functional group? Yes, it has it. So basically, this is the answer to the question. As Elias said, for you to know a compound that is an alcohol, it will have the OH functional group it is in its uh, 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 compound. And to be specific, this compound is called methanol. Okay, this must be noted. It is called methanol. Now, for all these, for you to know the names of this compound, you have to understand what we call hyopac nomenclature, how to name organic compounds, which I already have video lessons on my YouTube channel. So you go check it. And, and I'm going to put the, the link to assess that video lesson in the description section. So you can click the link and go learn how to name organic compounds. So moving further to question number two, which says the nucleus of an atom contains now before me uh, uh, before i start reading out the options i have to basically explain something very important now let's take an example let's say this is an atom i'm going to uh, 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 utilize this part of the board very well now this is an atom okay and this atom okay this is an atom and basically an atom is made up of a centrally located nucleus so this is the nucleus of an atom this must be noted now looking at this will this nucleus be called the atomic nucleus or cell nucleus it is called atomic nucleus because we are discussing about what atom this is not biology if we're talking about biology it's going to be called the cell nucleus but this is chemistry and we are dealing with the atom so i call it what to be specific atomic nucleus and an atom is made up of three subatomic particles, which are protons, electrons, and neutrons, which I call pair of an atom. So in the look of things, it must be noted here that just two of these aforementioned subatomic particles are found inside the nucleus of an atom there, and they are protons and neutrons. This must be noted. Protons and neutrons are found inside the nucleus of an atom. Please, as you are watching this video lesson, make sure you jot down so that after watching the lesson, you can uh, go study all these notes you've written down. It's going to help you in your exam. So moving further, as Elia said, protons and neutrons are found here inside the nucleus of an atom, whereby electrons are revolve around the orbits, okay? These are electrons, okay? These are 
electrons. So this must be noted. All these are electrons. So that is why a region in space where there is a high possibility of finding an electron, it is called the orbital. Okay, but protons and neutrons are found where inside the nucleus of an atom. Okay, so moving further, the nucleus of an atom contains. Let's just get to the option that contains protons and neutrons. And, and, and I believe you are seeing it here. It is option D because it contains protons and neutrons, the nucleus of an atom. So moving further to the next practice question, which is question number three. And it is the empirical formula of an oxide of nitrogen containing 30.4% nitrogen is... So it is very easy. First of all, they mention oxide of nitrogen. What does it mean? It means that this compound will contain two sets of elements, oxide of nitrogen. First, it will contain nitrogen and oxide, oxygen, and it will contain what? Oxygen. So this must be noted. So you can see here that this uh, 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 for we to get our, our empirical formula because that's what they're asking us to get you know empirical formula is simply the simplest formula of a compound so moving forward these are the two elements that mix up this oxide of nitrogen and in the look of things they said it contains what 30 okay the percentage of the element i'm going to use this part of the board okay to solve the question so listen carefully so this is the percentage of the element for nitrogen it was given to be 30 0.4 percent so moving further did they give us the percentage of oxygen no so how do you get the percentage of oxygen remember percentage is over 100 so this must be noted you know percentage of nitrogen plus percentage of oxygen is supposed to give us how many percent in total 100 percent so since the percentage of nitrogen is given to be 30.4 percent plus the unknown we are looking for so we can get the percentage of what night or of of which of the of the element now oxygen so making x subject to formula what are we having this will come here and when it comes it become negative so it become 100 percent minus 30 point 30.4 percent so what are we having okay so 100 minus 30 point 30.4%, that's 69.6%. So I'm having, I'm having 69.6%. So B, the percentage of which element now? Oxygen. So remember the next step, divide by their atomic masses. So let's do that. What's the atomic mass of nitrogen? 14. What's the atomic mass of oxygen? 16. So let's divide. So 30.4 divided by 14, that is 2.1 seven okay let's say that 2.17 and the other is 69.6 percent over 16 that is 4.35 uh, uh, so the next step is to divide by the smallest so between these two values which is the small which is smaller this 2.17 is smaller so this cancel this this is one so let's do so let's divide that so 4.35 over 2.17 that is two to be the mole ratio of oxygen, whereby the mole ratio of nitrogen is one. So in the look of things, since we are having this, what becomes the percent, what becomes the empirical formula of the compound? It becomes N1O2. So let's write it here. Empirical formula of the compound becomes N1O2, or we simply say empirical formula is equal to NO2 because one is what negligible. So this is the answer to the question without stress. It is so much very easy. So with all this, say what becomes our answer to the question option C. So you can see how questions like this are being tackled without stress. Let's get into the next practice question, which is question number four. Okay, guys, moving further, let's get into the next practice question, which is question number four. And it says bronze is an alloy of. Okay, now this must be noted. First of all, we have to know what an alloy is. Now, an alloy is a mixture. This must be noted. An alloy is a mixture. It is not an element or rather a compound. It is a mixture that is made by adding one or more metal to a base element most times being a metal to form a desired product now this must be noted for example now they are not asking us bronze is an alloy of so bronze first of all is an alloy so it is an alloy of so bronze basically we have a base metal 
And what is the other metal or the other element that will combine with the base metal to form bronze? Now, this must be noted. The base metal for the alloy bronze is copper. Okay, whereby the other metal that will combine with copper, okay, to form bronze is tin, S-N. Do you get? So, bronze is an alloy of copper, copper, and what? Tin. This must be noted. Whereby for brass, let's take brass, for example. For brass, brass is an alloy that is made up of copper as its base metal also, and another element which is zinc zn so for brass brass is made up of copper and zinc while for bronze is copper and tin this must be noted now the easy way to know this just take note of for brass and bronze the base metal is copper so moving further let's get into the next practice question which is question number five which is which is the general formula of alkane now it must be noted here that the general formula for alkane is simply cn h2n plus 2 this must be noted okay you already know that alkanes they are hydrocarbons that means they contain just hydrogen and carbon and the first member of the alkane series is methane methane can be called marsh gas or fire damp okay and it must be noted here that alkanes they are sp3 hybridized when it comes to the hybridization and they are saturated compounds all these must be noted you have to jot all these said they are very important meanwhile for this group of compounds that have the general formula which is cnh2n they are regarded to be called alkenes okay compounds with the double bond but our case they are what single bonded compounds okay where I, for this which is cn h2n minus two they are regarded to be called alkynes compounds with triple bonds whereby for this none of the above so this becomes the answer meanwhile the question the next question which is question number six says the iopac name of the compound is now this must be noted this for we to get the iopac name you have to basically know that removing oh which is the alcohol as earlier said in the first practice question removing oh this compound being seen here is called benzene okay and this is the oh functional group do you get so what do we call this compound iopacly it is basically called hydroxyl why because of the oh attached hydroxyl and what is this compound called benzene so it is called hydroxyl benzene this must be noted whereby if you want to call it commonly so the common name of this compound is phenol okay this must be noted and this compound is used as a disinfectant this must be noted so moving further to the next part question which is question number seven it says which of the following represents a carboxylic acid for we to identify a carboxylic acid it will have this which is the rcooh okay functional group so looking at all this option which correlates to rcooh is it option b no this is for the alcohol because the oh is it for this ro ro no this group of compounds they are called ethers okay they are called what ethers not esters well for this these are called esters okay whereby for this written they are called carboxylic acids also called alkanoic acids and this is the option that explains that now let's check are you not seeing arrow at the beginning yes what's the next element i can see carbon carbon okay and also i can see what oxygen we take it as this first oxygen i can see under oxygen we take it as second oxygen and lastly i can see hydrogen so we take it at the last and this written here is just the structural form to which a carboxylic acid is written so the answer to this question is option a which is question number seven. So moving further to question number eight, it says the catalyst used in contact process is called vanadium pentoxide. This is the answer option A. Vanadium, V, vanadium pentoxide because of five 
paint. So it's called vanadium pentoxide. Option A, it's not zinc, it's not amylase. Amylase is a is an enzyme, okay, a biological catalyst, which are called enzymes. Okay, so that's for that. So for question number nine, it says a proton acceptor is simply called a base. This must be noted. Whether a proton donor is called an acid. Okay, so moving further to question number 10, it says the process whereby an acid is used to remove rust from metals. This is simply called pickling. And the popular acid that does this function is most at times HCl called hydrochloric acid. Now, if you are just joining this community and you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also share these lessons with your friends. It's going to help you all in the preparation for the jam examination. So moving further, let's get into the next practice question. Okay, guys, moving further, let's get into the next practice question, which is question number 11. And it says, why are silver salt kept in brown bottles in the laboratory? Now, the reason why salt that are formed from silver as a metal are kept in brown bottles in the laboratory is because when exposed to sunlight, they decompose. Okay, so this must be noted when salt that are formed from silver, when they are exposed to sunlight, they what decompose. And this type of reaction is called a photochemical reaction, a reaction that is influenced by light. So when exposed to sunlight, they decompose. So this must be noted for question number 11. And question number 12, it says the minimum energy barrier which colliding particle must overcome for a reaction to take place is called activation energy. This must be noted, okay? It's called activation what energy. The minimum energy required which two colliding particles must overcome first. Let's say A and B is to react. So when they overcome the minimum energy barrier, the reaction will what? Take place. So what's that called? Activation energy. So moving further to so question number 13, and it says, the basicity of H2SO4 and CH3COH are dash and dash now it must be noted here that basicity basically is for acid so basicity of an acid both are acids this is an inorganic acid whereby this is an organic acid and organic acids are weak acids whereby this is a strong acid so what's the basicity of this set of compounds now let me quickly explain by writing out a reaction i'm going to or, or manage the board. So this is H2SO4. I believe you are seeing it. When I decompose this, when I break down H2SO4, I will have H plus as the first ion and a radical which is SO4 to minus. Okay, this must be noted. This is called the sulfate radical. So is this reaction balanced? No, it is not balanced. So I have to put two here to balance my hydrogen. So in the look of things, what is basicity of an acid? It is the number of replaceable hydrogen ion in what? One molecule of an acid. So in the look of things, what becomes the basicity of H2SO4? Dibasic 2. Okay, is what? Dibasic. That's for H2SO4. And for CH3COH, which is an inorganic acid, uh, sorry, which is an organic acid, let's dissociate this compound. When I break this compound down, I will have the CH3CO minus, okay, plus H plus as the hydrogen ion. What we are interested in here is the hydrogen ion. So in the look of things, as I've broken down this compound, you can see here that at the end of the reaction, because the reaction is now balanced. So at the end of the reaction, I add H plus, which is one in this compound. So what becomes the basicity of this compound? It is mono basic. And mono means one. So why the basicity of this compound become what? One. So this must be noted. So Moving further to question number 14, it says, um, on exposure to the atmosphere, an hydrated salt loses its water of crystallization to become anhydrous. This phenomenon is called. Now, this must be noted. Let's say a compound contains water before. And let's take an example. This, uh, 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 what do you call it now? Copper sulfate 5H2 o And it is popularly called the blue vitro. Okay, vitro. 
or vitriol. This must be noted. Now, when this compound is being exposed to the atmosphere and loses this water of crystallization to the atmosphere, okay, the point here is this. You can see that 5H2O, which is the water of crystallization, was attached to this compound. But at the end of being exposed to air, okay, or yes, being exposed to the atmosphere, okay, because air is found there. So, being exposed to air, which is dry air in this case, you can see that the water crystallization that was attached to the compound left was lost. That is why it's not attached now in this case. So you can see here that this phenomenon has a process and it is called efflorescence. This must be noted, okay? You must take note that when a compound that is uh, hydrated before, hydrated means with water, when exposed to the atmosphere, it becomes anhydrous. Anhydrous here means without water. Is see you so far with water now no it is without water so this must be noted and the process is called efflorescence so moving further to question number 15 it says the process by which a collider solutes or, or scatter light called tinder's effect okay it's called an effect and it's called tinder's effect this must be noted so moving further to question number 16 and it says it's h2s called hydrogen hydrogen sulfide has a rotting egg smell. Is this statement true or false? Yes, it is true. Hydrogen sulfide has a rotting egg smell. So moving further to question number 17, I says, hydrogen gas is odorless. Is this statement true? Yes, hydrogen gas is an odorless gas. So for 18, it says a compound that contains hydrogen and one other element only is called. Now they are not saying that this compound, okay, it contains hydrogen with what another element what do we call this set of compounds they are called hydrides this must be noted okay they are called what hydrides okay only but let's take an example let's say a compound contains oxygen with another element okay at all only this set of compounds are called oxides now in the look of things how many elements are making up this two set of compounds just two so these two set of compounds what are they called are they binary of ternary compounds they are called binary compounds because they contain just how many elements two because binary means two do you get so this must be noted so for question number 19 it says the oil for graphite is called plumbago this must be noted the oil for graphite is called plumbago you know graphite is one what allotrope of carbon now to be specific graphite is a crystalline allotrope of carbon allots alongside diamond okay so moving further to question number 20 and it says air is not a mixture is this statement true or false this statement is false air is a mixture of gases okay it contains various gases okay and air basically contains various gases which includes uh, nitrogen gas oxygen gas carbon dioxide. it includes water vapor Okay, water vapor, you have, you have to take note. And all these gases have their respective percent. For nitrogen gas is 78%. For oxygen is 21%. For carbon dioxide is 0.03%. And we have water vapor, we have dust, okay? And noble gases. So all these are the components of air. So air is a mixture and air is not a compound nor an element. Do you get? So this statement is false because air is a mixture of gases. So with all this said, let's get into the next practice question. And if you find this video helpful, do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also share these lessons with your friends, okay, to help one another. Okay, guys. So moving further to the next practice question, which is the temperature and pressure at which the three states of matter coexist is simply called triple point. These must be noted. And what are the three states or the three major states of matter? They are solid, liquid, and gases. Remember, for, for solids, they, whereby for liquids, they undergo translational motion. And lastly, for gases, they undergo random motion. So this must be noted. So, and it must be noted here that the temperature and pressure at which these three states of matter coexist is simply called the triple point. So moving further, the occurrence of an element, that's the next practice question 22, it says, the occurrence of an element with more than one form in the same physical state, this is simply called 
allotropy. This must be noted. Okay, the occurrence of an element in or uh, with more than one forms in the same physical state is called allotropy. We have various elements and their allotropes, like likes of carbon. Okay, carbon exhibits uh, exists in various allotropic form. Okay, we have the crystalline form to which carbon exists, and also the amorphous form to which carbon exists. For the crystalline allotropes of carbon, we have two major examples, which are the diamond and graphite, though we have others, okay, whereby for the amorphous allotrope of carbon, we have the, we have uh, the likes of coal, charcoal, okay, soot, lamb black, so all these must be noted. So moving further, so question number 23 says, elements in the same group of the periodic table are called, okay, this must be noted, elements in the same group of the periodic table, they are called co-genus, okay, from the word gene, Okay, you can see that gene means resemblance. So if they are found in the same group of the periodic table, they will have the same uh, uh, chemical properties. Okay, so they are termed co-genus. So moving further to the next practice question, which is 24, it says, the type of bonding that results in the transfer of electron from a donor atom, which is the metal. So it means that the electron will come from the metal, okay? transfer from the metal which is the donor atom to a recipient atom so the element that will receive this electron that that, that has been transferred from the metal is called the non-metal so this bonding or this type of bonding is simply called the electrovalent bonding okay electrovalent what bonding system you know we have various bonds okay we have electrovalent bond covalent bond which are of two ordinary covalent bond and the coordinate covalent bond okay so this must be noted you know coordinate covalent bond can also be termed dative bonding and they have their own specific properties and characteristics to be noted so moving further to shapes of molecules now in this practice question i'll be basically giving you some molecules and their shapes because it's going to be important for your exams so it must be noted here that this is the part for molecule i'll be writing and here is their shape whereby here will be a, um, their bond angle. So knowing the bond angles of these molecules, knowing the shapes of these molecules is going to help you, okay? Now, the first molecule I'll be talking about is water, which is H2O. So what's the shape of water? Water has a V shape, okay? Or we can as well say water has an angular shape or a bent shape. This must be noted. You have to write this down. And what is the bond angle of water? It is basically 105 degrees, okay? So this must be noted. It is 105 degrees. So moving further to another molecule, and this molecule in this case will be, let's say, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, or even chlorine gas, Cl. So what is the shape of molecules like this? Though there are ways to know these shapes, but knowing this right now is going to help you. So for this particular molecule, they have a shape to be linear. Okay, so they have linear shape whereby the bond angle of compounds like this is 180 degrees. So moving further to the next example I'll be talking about uh, is ammonia, which is NH3. And ammonia has which shape? It has a trigonal, okay, pyramidal shape. Now, as Elia said, there are ways to know the shapes of this compound. But knowing the shape, just knowing the names and the shapes of these compounds and their bond angle is very important right now. So it must be noted here that the bond angle for this compound, which is ammonia, is 107 degrees, okay? Whereby for the last set of compound we'll be talking about is simply this, which is CH4, and CH4 is methane. So what is the shape of methane? It is tetrahedra in shape. And it has a bond angle to be 109.5 degrees, or we simply say 109.28 minutes. Okay, maybe in your exam, you they might put here to be the degree, or they will convert these five degrees to 20 minutes. So it's going to be 28 minutes. Okay, so just know this is very important. So moving forward to question number 26, it says water, ethanol, and ethanoic acids are covalent compounds. Yes, they are covalent compounds, yet they have high boiling point. Because covalent compounds, if they are solid, they basically have low boiling point. So the reason now, because this is very important. So why is it that water, ethanol, and ethanoic acids have 
high boiling point. This is due to the presence of a type of bond in their molecule called hydrogen bond. Okay, due to hydrogen bond present their molecule. Okay, presence in their molecule. So you have to take note of this because of hydrogen bond being present in their molecule. That is why they have high boiling point. So moving further to question number 27 it says the allotrope of carbon that has and uh, that is octahedra in shape is basically called um diamond. Okay, diamond is octahedra in shape, but my graphite is hexagonal in shape. So moving further, the discovery of electrons was by the man that discovered electron is simply called J.J. Thomson. Okay, this must be noted. Whereby discovery of protons was by who? The uh, scientist called Lord Ernest Rutherford. So you have to take note of this. Electrons, oh, sorry, protons was discovered by this man called Lord Ernest Rutherford. Whereby electron was by the man called J.J. Thomson. So this must be noted. Whereby we'll go over to question number 30 and it says the properties of an element okay which are in periodic function of their atomic number is simply called a law called the periodic law and the periodic law the modern periodic law was stated by a man called Henry Moseley do you get so this must be noted so let's get into the last phase of this video lesson which is question number 31 and it's going to entail more of calculation question and if you are just joining this community and you haven't subscribed yet to this channel do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also give this video a like share these videos with your friends okay to help one another so let's get into the next phase of this video lesson okay guys let's get into the next practice question which is question number 31 and it says determine the number of protons electrons and neutrons in this atom though i already have video lessons that explain how to determine the proton electron and neutron number of an atom okay okay specifically an atom or an ion so you do where to go watch that video lesson meanwhile i'm going to put the link to assess all these explained all the questions being explained a lot of video lessons have been made okay so you do go watch the video uh, the single video lessons to get in a lot of insight consigning each of the questions I'll, I'm, I'll put a lot of links in of these video lessons in the comment section okay so you do well to go watch that so meanwhile let's get into this practice question and solve it together so for we to solve this question first of all we have to basically just take note of this which is an unknown atom x a z so okay now this place that is written up here this x here is called the atomic mass okay it's called what atomic mass i'm going to write it up here atomic mass and if i don't want to call it atomic mass i will simply call it mass number i believe you are seeing what i'm writing so moving further this is z z is simply called atomic number it's simply called what atomic number so the question now is because knowing this is going to help us solve this question so for this atom for this atom now that is x a z how do we get our proton electron and neutron very easy to get our proton our proton is same as z so whatever value that is here is same as our proton so moving further for electron how do we get our electron number our electron number is same as our proton number for a neutral atom now in the in the look of things looking at sodium is it, it does it have a plus sign or negative sign no it is neutral it is neutral sodium so as Elia said now that for a neutral atom proton number equals electron number so since our proton number is z already so what becomes our electron number i said is the value that will be here okay is our proton number and the proton number is same as our z so as we progress out to solve we get to understand better so how do we get a neutron number our neutron number is solved by saying a minus z okay which is atomic mass or mass number minus atomic number so a minus what z so moving further how do we solve this question very easy what's our proton number remember we said proton number is what is down and it is 11 and that was our electron number our electron number basically same as our proton number for a neutral atom so electron number is same as 11 so what becomes our neutron number our neutron number basically is gotten by saying atomic number minus uh, uh sorry atomic mass or mass number minus atomic number so a minus z so neutron become what's our atomic mass or mass number it is a value that is up 23 minus what's our z it doesn't change 11 so 23 minus 11 was that 12 so what is our proton number our proton number is 11 our electron number is 11 as our, and our neutral number is 12 
okay as earlier said i have video lessons that explains perfectly how all these works so you go check those video lessons out okay so moving further the next practice question which is which gas below burns with a pale blue flame and makes a pop sound when burning it is simply hydrogen gas this must be noted okay this is one property of hydrogen gas so moving further to question number 33 it says oxides of non-metals what are they called they are called acidic oxides this must be noted oxides of non-metals are called acidic oxides or we can as well call them acid anhydrides okay so moving further to question number 20, 34 it says calculate the current in amperes required to uh, produce 18 grams of aluminum in two hours now in the look of things this question is from a topic in chemistry in chemistry called electrolysis which already have video lessons that explains from the introductory aspect to the calculative aspect of electrolysis down till the last aspect of electrolysis so you do go watch those video lessons which i said i'm going to put the link there to assess the lessons but before then let's solve this question together and for we to do this we have to take note of a formula which i'm writing here and it is mass is equal to molar mass times i times t over q times f now we'll solve this question together and the question says calculate the current current is symbolized as i okay so in the look of things what are they asking us to get current so we'll make it subject so making current subject what are we having this we times when i have mass times q times f over okay what are we having next molar mass okay molar mass times t we've made i subject of formula so moving further okay what's the mass given in the question the mass is 18 grams so here becomes 18 grams okay times what's our q q means q means now let me quickly explain what each of them mean but i said i already have video lessons so you can go watch those video lessons to understand perfectly how this works and other related calculations in electrolysis so i here means current t here means time time in seconds okay so in a practice question whereby time is given in another unit like a minute as you have to convert to seconds and i'm going to explain how to do that q here is the charge of the element okay charge of element has to do with the, the the charge on top of that particular element now in the look of things we are dealing with aluminum and aluminum always is aluminum three plus so moving further what becomes the charge the charge is the number that is here so it's three do you get so becomes so what becomes q it is three times faraday's constant faraday's constant is a number which is nine six five hundred coulombs over what's molar mass of aluminum you have to take note of it aluminum atomic mass of molar mass is 27 grams per mole though the exam though given the example you have to just know it to be on the safe side so here's 27 times uh what's the time the time is two hours we have as early as we must convert two seconds and how do we convert from hours to seconds we times that 260 we say times 60 times 60 so what are we having two hours will not be two hours times 60 times 60 what are we having two times 60 times 60 that's seven thousand two hundred seconds so the point here is this for instance our time was two minutes for we to convert to seconds with times by just 160 because it was as we times by 260 so here becomes 7200 seconds so when we hit our calculator so 18 grams times 3 times 96500 over 27 times 7200 that is 26.8 okay amperes though the value is large but this is the answer to the question okay 26.8 amperes so you have to take note of this it is very very important okay so knowing this just solved is going to help you when you see related questions and you have to take note of this question specifically okay you might just be uh, surprised and you see them in the exam hall so guys moving further to the next practice question which is question number 35 and it says 600 cm cube of a setting gas at constant pressure okay so if pressure is constant what law we are we talking about it is the child's law but let's read the question and bring out our parameter to be sure of the law formula to use okay i have video lessons on all this so moving further okay it says since red cm cube of a setting gas at constant pressure had a temperature of 49 degrees celsius 
at what temperature in kelvin will it occupy at 800 degrees sorry at 800 cm cube so how do we solve this question first of all the question says 600 cm cube of a setting gas so 600 cm cube of that setting gas is our v1 it is the first volume mentioned in the question okay that's why it's v1 okay at constant pressure at a temperature t1 that's the temperature value ahead first 49 degrees celsius remember when solving questions in chemistry our temperature most times should be converted to kelvin and how do we do that we use a mathematical expression which is degree celsius plus 273 is equal to kelvin so what's the degree celsius value 20, 40, 49 plus 273 what's that so 49 plus 273 that's uh 322 kelvin do you get so this is approximately 322 kelvin so we have to use this value to solve in the question so then i said that at what temperature that means they are asking us to get t2 the second temperature okay will that gas occupy uh given the volume to be 800 cm cube so the v2 now is 800 cm cube so in the look of things you can see is volume temperature relationship whereby pressure is constant we have to use the charles law which is v1 over t1 is equal to v2 over t2 so in the look of things what are they asking us to make subject t2 so doing that t2 will now be equal to v2 times t1 over v1 so let's do that so what's v2 v2 is 800 times what's t1 t1 is it 49 or 322 it is 322 over what's v1 600 so let's press a calculator so 800 times 322 over 600 what's that for i had t2 temperature 2 to be 429.33 kelvin so what becomes the answer option b so you can see how questions like this are being tackled without stress so moving further to the next practice question which is 36 it says the ability for carbon to form single or multiple bond or, or, or multiple bond with other atoms of its kind is simply called catenation okay so this must be noted for example you can see that carbon as an element is forming uh, multiple bonds okay is forming multiple bonds be it single or double bonds do you get so this is called catenation okay not only carbon forms catenation we have other elements like oxygen in the form of ozone okay also catenate phosphorus catenate and the rest others so moving over to question number 37 says organic compounds are insoluble in water true most organic compounds they have insolubility in water that's some characteristics general characteristics of organic compounds so move further to 38 it says this compound benzene with the ch3 group in this video lesson i think i talked about phenol also called hydroxybenzene so in this context we have to know what this group is it is called methyl group substituent so this compound will be called methyl what's this benzene okay it's called what methyl benzene and ben methyl benzene popularly is called toluene you get toluene so moving further to question number 39 says the monomer of natural rubber is called two methyl buta one three diene that's the monomer of natural rubber two methyl buta one three diene so moving further to the next and the last practice question which says who introduced the symbol to classify elements this was done by a man called Bezilius, okay john jacob Bezilius. okay so we have come to the end of this video lesson and if you find this video lesson helpful okay do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also give this video a like share these lessons with your friends okay to make a lot of persons see these lessons okay to help you all preparing for the examination jam examination and by god's grace i wish you all success in your exams thanks for watching